Hello. Uh, what we're going to do today is take this information about the population in Japan and Haiti in 2010 and turn it into two different age structure diagrams. There's a lot of ways to do this, but we're going to do it in pretty much one of the quicker ways. So uh, the first thing we need to do is take these population values over here and make them smaller. So we're going to divide them by a thousand. Click here, hit equals. We can then say that we want this cell to equal this value because this is the divided by a million version of Japan and Japan's data is over here. So hit enter and there you'll see the values are exactly the same. But we don't want it to be exactly the same. We want it to be divided by a thousand. So you hit divide, which is that little backslash, and then a million. Sorry, I mean a million divided by one million. So that's six zeros. It's one followed by six zeros. One. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, hit enter. And it pops up as 3, which is correct. They've taken this 2,597,406 and divided by a million, it comes out to more or less 3. They rounded it off, and if that rounded off value seems a little too small, what I like to do is click this button here, and that'll give me a decimal. But here's the great part about Excel. Uh, when you have a cell highlighted like this one, there's a little box in the bottom right corner. And if you hover over that, your cursor turns black. That means that you can then take what's in the cell and you can spread it out in a certain direction. So here we've taken this equation and spread it out downward for all of these cells. And this B3 that's up here and refers to this cell, that when it moves to a new cell, it scales. So now this is B6 and it's looking at the appropriate box for that value, which is the neat trick. Now, if we want to do this over here for female, notice this is B3, we can stretch this over. Now this is C3. This cell for the females in Japan is looking at C3, the females in Japan. So it worked out because it scaled over to the right, just one block, and this table looks a whole lot like this table. So now we have this, and we can scroll this down. So now we've done it for, uh, Japan, we can do the same thing for Haiti, equals that, divided by 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there we go. We've got a value here, but let's change that so it has a decimal. We're going through the same process again. It's just the same sort of thing. You get all these values, and now we have numbers that correspond to how many millions of people there are in each of these categories. But the instructions say that the males should be negative, because we want them to show up on a different part. And for that, go back to this equation and put a negative sign in front of that B3 and after the equals. The equals has to be first for Excel to know that you want it to do a calculation. Uh, but you can throw in a negative and it gives you then the negative version of all those numbers. We can do the exact same thing for Haiti, throw in a negative, hit enter, and then we can do this drag down trick. Now, uh, it doesn't show the negative for any zero values, but that's just because zero rounded off. Zero shouldn't be positive or negative, it's just zero. So. Here we have these values, and we want to make a graph from here. So we'd want to say insert and then a bar graph. And we want this middle type of bar graph, the stacked bar, so that these things turn out to be just about right. And this is what our graph should look like. Uh, it should come out with this, and you'll notice that I did select these headings when I selected all the data, and that means that these titles come out just right. If you do that wrong, these will come out to a bunch of stuff, probably this explanation here. And so this is all of our data for Japan. And if you notice down here, these numbers look like small numbers, and that's because they're millions. So this is representing 2 million people. And so we need to clean this up so that it's a little bit easier to see. The first thing I like to do is take this and right-click on it and then format this axis. I want to change this axis label to be on the low side of the numbers of the graph, and it jumps to over here, the low side. So those are nice and off to the side. But now we need to do some labeling with this graph and get the, the data to look right. So let's format this data series and tell it we want to have this overlap at 100 and the gap width at 100. It just makes the bars look a little bit bigger and easier to see. But now time for title. Our chart title, chart title can be centered. And I'm just going to do a short version of this. Japan population 2010. Your title that you need is a little bit longer, 
And then the axis titles. The horizontal title, I'm going to put the title axis below as the population. And this is in millions. So that you remember that these numbers here are in millions. And these negatives, even though they're negative, that just means that they're on the left side of the axis. So it's not a big deal. And then here, it's always good to label your vertical axis as well. I'm going to do a rotated thing. And since these are age groups, I'm just going to call them age groups. Oops. OK. So now, this graph is done for the Japan population uh, in 2010. And you can see how the population changed over time. And there's some interesting trends to look at and answer questions about. Let's make the same exact graph for Hades results. And so again, I'm going to select this data. Then I'm going to say insert bar graph, the middle bar graph. And here's our numbers. Now all we have to do is do the same sort of thing where we can set it all up so that it looks the same sort of way. So axis labels, change these to low. Uh, and change my data series so that it looks like it's got bigger bars. And you can play with those numbers a little bit, make them bigger or smaller if you want. Uh, but here, we can now go to layout. And let's do, a, I just like above chart. I'm going to go with that one. This is Haiti. Make sure I spell Haiti correctly. Population 2010. And now I can put in the axis labels, the horizontal title below the axis is going to be, and sometimes you can write in your axis titles up here. Oops, uh, something's going on. Maybe I won't do that. I'll come over here. Oh, see, it did populate in here. It's still millions of people. And then I can label my age groups as well. Axis titles, vertical, rotated. These are going to be my, let's try this again, age groups. OK. So now we've got all this made. These two graphs are totally set. And we've got, oops, this legend. We can move down a little bit. So we've got these two graphs. Now in your instructions for this lab, it also says that you should try and change these so that you're looking at populations in thousands. And so let's change the Japan population to be thousands, which means we can go into this equation and just take out three zeros. So now we're dividing by a thousand. So this gives us a number here. And you'll notice our graph automatically updates. And right now it looks a little weird. But if we take this to all of the male population, then we do the same thing for all of the female. And so I'm still just doing one and then doing this pull down trick. You can see that nothing has changed in the way it's shaped once this is finished, but the numbers down here have changed. And so it's good for me to go back and change my label so that I know I'm looking at thousands. I don't know. This, this scale down here maybe helps it seem a little bit more clear that this is 2,000 thousands of people. I don't know. Maybe that helps. Maybe it's more confusing. In any case, it's good for you to see at least once that you can represent numbers like millions with thousands of thousands. So let's do it for Haiti, just so that it's clear. And I think with the Haiti example, it starts to make a little bit more sense because most of their populations are on the scale of thousands. So if we do this, there again, you see that these numbers have changed and our populations are not in the millions, so we should modify this label. So this would be thousands. And that's it. That's how you make one of these graphs. And that's the trick. So good luck. And we'll talk about this lab in a bit. Answer the questions on the packet.